All right, and welcome to the Vani Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Shane Rayo2, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia, the self liberator's paradise. Uh, for more information on the Second Realm Network, currently under construction, uh, just visit, just visit Pasnia.com. That's P-A-Z-N-I-A dot com. Uh, so it's January, and we've just started our Breakthrough Energy series, but today we need, we need to take a, a step in a slightly different direction, uh, back to our perpetually ongoing crypto anarchism series. Uh, there are two reasons for this. Uh, first off, pertaining to, uh, you know, across, you know, all the websites, on both the Elio publications and the Pasnia stores, uh, Lightning Network, Network payments are now accepted, uh, perfect for the digital section of our books uh, via BTC Pay Server. Uh, further, on the Vani podcast website, uh, you'll start to see a BTC Pay Server button, uh, enabling you to make a quick, easy donation to the Second Realm, uh, whether on-chain Bitcoin or Lightning Network Bitcoin. Uh, this also means that the Vani podcast is now on Lightning apps like Fountain, uh, where you can stream sats, uh, for example, 1,000 sats per episode or 15 per minute or whatever you decide. Uh, this podcast or whatever podcast is worth to you. Uh, if you'd like to check out Fountain, I would recommend visiting vanipodcast.com uh, forward slash Fountain. Uh, that is a short link for an affiliate link. Uh, get on board through there, and uh, I guess Fountain will toss, toss some sats in our direction, so that's always good. Uh, and I must say, as someone who, is, who even within the past week or two was not very hopeful about Lightning, uh, this has been a revelatory, exp- a revelatory experience, and I look forward to uh, more experimentation. Uh, now, the second reason for our temporary, dig- temporary digression from, from Breakthrough Energy, uh, I recently, recently connected with Uri Bednar, uh, co-founder of Parallel Polis, across the pond over in Prague, I think it is, uh, an author of Cryptocurrencies, Hack Your Way to a Better Life, and uh, from my vantage point, uh, someone truly living a second realm, Vanu lifestyle. Uh, Paul Rosenberg also wrote the preface for the aforementioned book, which, uh, with such a friendly reminder, means that uh, my free time as of late has been joyously consumed um, by reading The Breaking Dawn, such an amazing work of freedom-focused fiction, and uh, up next, uh, rereading Lodging of Wayfaring Men, uh, which, funnily enough, and synchronistically enough, when considering our Breakthrough Energy series, I actually read most of The Lodging of Wayfaring Men uh, in the back of a van at my six-month stint pursuing an electrician apprenticeship. Um, so yeah, if you, and also if you look up Paul on Amazon, you'll basically just find endless pages of electrical manuals written by him. But uh, anyway, today we'll go deep into the founding of Parallel Polis, uh, some quite fascinating dissonant history, uh, things like Charter 77, uh, Dr. Veklov Benda, which I'll bring up a, a video game that I played a few years back too called Dusex, which incorporated a lot of, I, d- I didn't know about kind of that dissident history of the SAMHSA dot and stuff, but it made it, made it into that video game, which is a really, really good video game. So um, yeah, we'll talk about Yuri's path here, and uh, I'm sure throughout uh, some practical and actionable guidance in the pursuit of self-liberation and uh, the construction of, se- of the uh, Second Realm. So without further ado, Yuri, welcome to the Vani Podcast, my friend. Uh, so happy to have connected, and uh, it's great to be speaking with you. How are things going over there in uh, Prague, Paraguay? Uh, where might you be? <laughs> uh, right now I'm in Bratislava, Slovakia, uh, but I'm uh, traveling a uh, lot around. Uh, so first of all, thank you for having me. As I said, I've, I'm a... Um, I'm a fan of Vonu podcast. <laughs> I've, I've spent a lot of time listening to it, so I'm excited to be here. Amazing, man. Well, that's uh, that's always always great to hear, especially you know folks who um, like I, like I mentioned in, in pre-show. Like uh, I've I've done a lot of study over the past five years on parallel societies and second realm and stuff. I didn't think there was that much more I could learn on it, um, but like your chapter was just extremely um, illuminating for a lot of reasons. So um, it'll definitely be a value to go deep into some of those things uh, today. But um, I guess uh, um, yeah, let's. I guess the, the first thing I should mention is your book um, is now on the uh, on the Elio Publications websites. Uh, so people are in the U.S. and not in you know Europe, and they want to order from or you get a copy of it, um, you can just visit libertyandertack.com forward slash hack your way. Um, and I'll have uh, all those links in the show notes. But, uh, but now I guess let's start with you. I'm, I'm curious, uh, uh, you know, your background, uh, what's, your, what's your story? Where does, where does it start for you and uh, how'd you get here? Uh, so I got uh, on the internet, uh, maybe uh, uh, end of elementary school and uh, start of high school. So uh we don't have mid school so uh, uh different model here in uh, europe uh but um um there was this um, uh this group of people called cypherpunks and we were uh, uh chatting on mailing lists and ircs and so on and um we were uh, playing with uh, this uh, new thing for encryption called pgp and uh, kind of trying to con well Back then, we were trying to uh, convince people to actually even <laughs> uh, reply to our emails. So it was uh, not everyone had an email address uh, back then. Um, it was a the time of landlines and so on. 
so what? Uh, uh, so so it was even harder to convince people to say, oh, maybe you should encrypt these um, uh, uh, these uh, emails that you send, and you know there's this command line utility. You write a text file and you <laughs> you run it, and then you paste <laughs> the result to the email. It's super user friendly, and by the way, you have to verify the keys and everything. So we were we were kind of the uh, the crazy people. Uh, but um, I didn't uh, uh, like. I didn't think much about uh, things like money or something like that. We were using uh, anonymity networks, though. Uh, back then, it was Mixmaster, um, which is uh, still, I think, uh, uh, a good idea uh, to this day. Um, so Mixmaster or uh, anonymous remailer, these were uh, tools that would do something like uh, onion routing. So. Um, they would accept your email, uh, hold it for a while, for a random random time, uh, send it to another node. Uh, it would also hold it for uh, for for some time and um, and send it. So uh, so that was uh, kind of my beginning. I was um, uh, interested in IT security. I was uh, uh, hacking. Uh, uh, back then, uh, hacking was super fun. I was like, uh, you know, you know how uh, uh, companies or universities have the day of open doors. Is it a phrase in English? Uh, we call it like the hmm. like an open op open day or something where you can visit and see how it works. Oh, okay, like so, an open house. Yeah, yeah, okay, an open house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Open house. Okay, okay. We call it like the day of open doors or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so, uh, so internet felt like that back then. You know, if you wanted to uh, have an uh, have a root access on some server, you uh, guess the password, which was probably you know root root or <laughs> something admin one two three or something like that, or you you could use an use an exploit. So, uh, uh, so. Uh, so it was very different back then. We were not, you know, um, our our threat model was not, you know, NSA and uh, global surveillance. Our threat model was, uh, you know, someone else breaking to our mail server because <laughs> no one wanted to touch it and patch it because uh, uh, it worked and everyone was happy. So. Um, so I uh, I uh, did a lot of uh, professionally. I did a lot of IT security, system administration. I ended up um, starting a few companies uh, in uh, in this business. Um, uh, but then came Bitcoin, and uh, that changed absolutely everything for me. Um, so one of the things, of course, um, uh, I studied uh, uh, computer science, theoretical computer science. So basically, first I I've seen the paper. No, no, I actually seen the um, uh, seen uh, uh, slash dot uh, news uh, entry about it, and they they explained that uh, you know it's a new currency, and if you run the software, it generates money. And I was like, okay, why would anyone <laughs> want to uh, use money that can be generated just by simply uh, you know uh, starting some software i i already had some gold back then so i i was thinking in these terms okay so if anyone can make it on his computer that, then it's probably mm -hmm. uh, not worth anything but then i then i read the paper uh, after a few uh, weeks and i liked uh, the computer science part of it i said okay so this works. It solves a very important uh, problem from computer science, which which is a distributed uh, consensus. But I didn't know if it could work as money. So I so I uh, called uh, uh, my friend, who who is an uh, economist of the only uh, true school of economy, which is Austrian economy. Uh, everything else is a scam, <laughs> mm -hmm. as you know. <laughs> um, and I, and I was talking for two hours, and so I said how it works and how it's supposed to work. And uh, I asked him if he could, um, if this technology could work as money. Uh, he said probably not, but it's interesting, so we'll see. Um, and that uh, led me. I was kind of playing with it. Uh, you could uh, slowly um, uh, start using it, buy some things online. Um, alpaca shoe uh, socks or uh, things like that and um, at some point i was a part of um, an art collective uh, that is called stohoven uh, and uh, it does um, uh, performative art uh, basically uh, 
it is uh, based in Czech Republic, but basically uh, very uh, interesting, controversial artwork in public space. Uh, the first super well-known was hacking of the broadcast of Czech TV, where there was weather panorama and broadcasting a nuclear blast <laughs> uh, on live TV. Uh, and there were other, other projects like this. And we were interacting, uh, uh, many artists, uh, uh, visual artists, uh, the, the uh, sculpture, there the are, uh, you know, all, all the art crafts uh, uh, involved, uh, videographer and, and so on. And uh, me and my friend uh, Pavel, uh, who, uh, who are hackers, uh, I consider everyone there a hacker, but in the, in the IT sense. Um, and me and Pavel, we were always telling them, you know, this Bitcoin thing, and uh, you can uh, uh, you can use it for many things. It's it's a new form of money, and uh, and uh, and things like that. Um, and they're artists; they want to create something tangible. You know, they don't that they don't like to uh, talk in a pub, you know, and uh, uh, feel uh, I, I don't know talk about who would build the roads or something like that. It's, it's not interesting for mm -hmm. especially this group of people. So they said, uh, let's just rent a house. Or, well, at first it was rent a room, <laughs> but then they're kind of megalomaniac and uh, they, they signed a contract for, for, for a three-story house. Um, and they said, okay, so if this really works um, as money, we will just accept this form of money and no state fiat currency and we will see if it works you know if it's uh, if it if it works we can uh, we can hopefully make it work if it doesn't work we will at least see uh, but uh, but you need to do it by experience it's no there's no point in uh, theories um so they, and one, they and one question this, would, would that be uh, like 2011 yeah. 2012 something like that yeah. time frame if you remember the year i'm just curious this year is going to be 10th anniversary, so 2013. Okay, interesting. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Was already already started, already started. Mm -hmm. uh, it started by Hackers Congress, uh, uh, so uh, this year will be the 10th anniversary of Hackers Congress, and also wow. uh, this year is uh, probably by this time, maybe maybe in April, uh, 10 years ago, uh, uh, we had already the 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 place so mm. uh the the uh the things um, uh, that led to it of course uh, took some time but uh, but this was when we really had the physical place um uh so and everyone kind of ran around and uh, some people said okay uh, everyone likes coffee uh, so we will make the best coffee in prague and then we will sell it only for bitcoin so if you want best coffee you need to come here and you need to learn how to use bitcoin of course we didn't know that there's no such thing as best coffee because everyone likes different style of coffee but <laughs> doesn't matter that was the thinking okay so what do we do okay uh, let's create a co-working space uh, one of the one of the ideas was um uh, that uh, because um, uh, because um, uh, Bitcoin and all the other technologies that we used in the projects like anonymization, encryption, and so on, um, uh, they uh, they are uh, the basic building blocks of this um, strategy called crypto anarchy. Uh, we decided it would be very fun to start uh, an institute of crypto anarchy and to. Put the name on on it's, top it's of the building, amazing. you know, because yeah. it's amazing. Of, of of course, you need an institute of crypto anarchy. You know, it needs to be serious. It needs to you know uh, uh, do press releases and, <laughs> and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, but then then uh, what was interesting uh, and that leads to uh, uh, what you what uh, uh, to, to your introduction. Um, uh, some people from the group, not me, they discovered this essay by Václav Benda called Paralni Polis. Uh, so for the, for those uh, who uh, didn't uh, read the, probably it will be in the in the name of the podcast, I guess. Uh, it's polis, so not uh, not bludges, <laughs> but polis uh, from Greek city. Uh, uh, actually, they used it in a form of like a small uh, uh societal unit so uh Paznia would be could be considered also a police uh, uh like a 
small unit of people where they can do social interactions. So that's the police and parallel means parallel. So this is also key. It's not alternative. Uh, alternative would say, we know how to do it. Uh, and you know, the, the mainstream solution is bad and uh, we want to replace it with our uh, version which would be okay if we believed in centralized solutions but we hope that there will be many parallel societies and they will be different uh, they will of course compete with the mainstream society uh, uh, or as von Wans call it uh, servile society <laughs> but uh, uh, but they, they they don't need to have the same idea so we are not saying okay this is the only way how to do parallel society this is our version um, actually, there are now more parallel police in uh, in more cities as well, uh, and they're all different uh, in in uh, in some cases. So in um, so uh, so okay. So the, these people they they took the philosophy, they kind of uh, read through it, spoke to some people who who studied the history of communist uh, Czechoslovakia, and they realized that the strategy uh, that Václav Benda proposed um, as a reaction to complete rejection of uh, Charta 77 um, uh, uh, is very similar to the strategy of crypto anarchy. So th there are many parallels. One is in physical space, one is in, uh, in virtual space. Um, so we wanted to uh, unite uh, uh, these two concepts, uh, crypto anarchy, which is a very new thing, uh, maybe maybe basically uh, started uh, when the communist regime uh, uh, at least officially ended in uh, Czechoslovakia. <laughs> um, uh, so so we want, wanted to see, okay, uh, how can we use strategies from one in the other? And what are the as uh, the aspects? Uh, the aspects. So uh, uh, the the descent uh, back then had a lot of time to think. So we could say, okay, we could use this thinking. You know, there's some people who uh, have already thought about these things. So why try to invent it from scratch when uh, they've been in a in a uh, in a very adver adversarial environment? You know, uh, they were really threatened to go to jail uh, all the time. So uh, so they have thought about it and there's not much of it uh, published in English. So our first conference uh, was International Conference, Hackers Congress Parallel Nepolis in English because we wanted to uh, kind of spread these ideas and let other people um, make use of them, uh, at least the parts that are applicable, not all of them are. Uh, so. So that's how the play started. Of course, we have we had uh, no idea what we what we were doing. Uh, I would say we still have no idea what we are doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, this is the philosophy. Freedom, freedom but then pioneer. you know <laughs> who pays the rent. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> so, uh, so, so uh, that that's the story. Uh, I don't know if you want to uh, talk more about the philosophy of parallel police, uh, what it actually means in practice. Or, or something else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess I'll, I'll just jump in and say that, um, uh, so there's a video on the Parallelonipolis uh, Paral YouTube channel, and um, it's uh, just like a three minute tour. I, I, it's uh, people watch, um, there's also an audiobook teaser of a chapter that's gonna be out. Um, I guess uh, it's already out in the podcast feed in Odyssey, but it'll go on, out on YouTube too. Um, but I used, uh, there's a, I guess a three minute video where it just shows like, I mean, it's a, this is a really beautiful, luxurious place. Um, you know, very, you know, many stories, um, lots of lots of stuff happening there, so it's, it is very very impressive. Um, what yeah, what you guys have done, and, and especially um, you know sticking to principles so hard that yeah, it's like we don't accept fiat here. This is only it's only you know only Bitcoin and, and other and you know other popular cryptos. So like it's it's really it's really really incredible. Um, and then yeah, I guess um, I I would like to go a little more into um, I guess maybe some of the um, I guess some of the I guess the the dissident I guess more of that dissident history and. Um, and check because I I played this I I didn't know anything about it but I, I played this video game a few years ago at the suggestion of Kyle Reardon, um old old host of this podcast um, and it's called uh, Do Sex and the, the one mm -hmm. the, I guess the second one's Mankind Divided and there's a different one too um, they're both great like I would recommend people you know get an Xbox mm -hmm. to play those games and then you know get rid of the Xbox after or whatever that's fine but um, it's it, it's very interesting a lot it plays into a lot of that sort of stuff 
Um, the first time I ever heard about the same SADAT was, you know, you actually go and you help them with submissions. Um, and there's, uh, I think there was, uh, there was one, one, one mission where you had to hack something and they took over the TV broadcast. So I think there's, there's probably some inspiration there from, uh, from what you, what you've talked about. So I guess, do you want, nice. just, um, would, do you want to go a little more into, I guess, um, you know, Charter 77, kind of a little bit of that history? Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. So basically, um, the the descent and the, um, uh, the the people that wanted a little bit more um, uh, of freedom, there was uh, of course a large group of people who um, who migrated, who escaped to U.S., to Canada, to Austria, Germany, and and so on. Uh, but they were still part of the descent because they were helping uh, people in uh, former Czechoslovakia. Uh, then there was a large group of um, uh, of uh, people, uh, of course, uh, uh, in the in the country, students, uh, university teachers, intellectuals, but even uh, normal people, philosophers, uh, and, and so on, and. Um, what started happening was these political trials uh, uh, that uh, that were very uh, disturbing. Uh, uh, of course, every kind of political trial uh, is uh, is disturbing if you jail people for their opinions or for uh, what they're writing or anything like that. It's uh, uh, it's not a nice. Uh, but what is interesting uh, is that um, they didn't even um, uh, they didn't even do the trials by the laws that they passed. So, uh, so uh, they were just making shit up. You know, they were not, you know, according to this law. But you know, uh, that they they, uh, they found some generic uh, whatever uh, treason or or, or uh, things like this, and they they were basically putting people to jail. So, um, so Harta seventy seven in 1977 was uh, basically just a petition uh for uh to uh to the government uh to the to the ruling party uh it was not uh, like uh trying to get rid of the communist regime it basically said please just accept the basic human rights and uh, the laws that you passed uh, using your own rules you know so it was very light it was not a like a revolutionary document or something basically mm -hmm. it said please be nicer to us you know and and that's all like we're, we mean no harm we don't want to replace you uh, we just want to live our lives and uh, you know we don't want to fear being jailed um it was completely rejected by the regime uh which uh, was uh, it was interesting because it was signed by like really important people the the uh, uh, the singers and uh, authors and, and stuff like that but they basically uh, basically rejected it um so Václav Benda who was one of the initiators uh said okay uh what are our options so uh one common option is uh, revolution. Uh, revolution is usually violent uh, or uh, expensive or hard to organize, especially in a repressive regime. So, so one of these two things, uh, uh, and they didn't think that they have enough energy to uh, do revolution. They were really, they really didn't want uh, anything violent to happen, and. This the, the the regime was starting to become a little bit violent, maybe more than a little bit, but uh, it was not like uh, uh, murdering people on the streets or anything like that. But uh, uh, they they uh, you know the cops starting be beating up people a little bit more and uh, jailing people and so on. So I said, okay, um, let's try to do something different. Uh, regime is regime. Uh, we have our lives and we want to live them uh, in, the, in the best way possible. And uh, uh, basically what, uh, what would be good is um, if we stayed out of jail, uh, but regained as much freedom as possible. So the strategy was, um, uh, so I'll, gi I'll give an example in a, in a specific uh, area, uh, which is uh, education. So if you send your kids to a state school, uh, which you had to do, if you didn't want them taken from you and, you know, educated uh, and parented by the state, 
uh, then they would definitely learn, you know, the evils of uh, imperial imperialism and uh, whatever uh, the best system is marxism leninism and all this bullshit so there's no like there there is no way to reform this there is no way to you know convince uh, the schools to teach something else but what you could do is uh, after school uh, someone uh, invites everyone to their house to their kitchen to their living room and uh, they do a talk uh, about whatever Western democracy, whatever whatever they wanted to. Uh, so th this is uh, uh, it is in important that there was information passing uh, 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 to Czechoslovakia from the West. So that it was another uh, another topic. So basically, uh, the strategy is as follows: uh, you do everything in order not to be harassed, uh, especially put in jail. So you. Uh, basically comply with the minimum uh, uh, set of requirements that gets you uh, that that keeps you out of jail and uh, you create for everything that is important in life you create um, a parallel solution you don't offer it to the mainstream uh, society you don't say oh we have just founded a be better school you know let's replace no this is our school uh, if someone wants to join, they can, but you know you're not going to announce it uh, on the streets or anything. So, so basically, um, uh, so so he wrote this essay. He had, uh, I think, five uh, areas. So education. Um, there was uh, uh, relig uh, religion because. Uh, I don't know if many people know this, but uh, in uh, old uh, Soviet-style communism, uh, uh, the the only official uh, opinion on things was uh, 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 they called it uh, scientific atheism or, or wow. something like that, materialistic atheism. So so religion was quite repressed. Somehow uh, worked. Uh, it, it, it somehow uh, was able to operate in villages or something. But basically, like if you um, if you uh, it was not practiced uh, in super openly, especially not uh, in a, in a higher ranks. I would say. Uh, so so this was important uh, uh, for them. Uh, then there was information exchange, which had an interesting innovation. So up up to this point, basically the samizdats, these uh, these uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, we would call them uh, uh, now what zines or magazines or newspapers yeah. or these essays and and things, um, uh, they would be uh, published, of course. Uh, uh, there was uh, not an easy way to copy them, so you ha had to kind of distribute them. Uh, so the original uh, original way how it worked was that uh, uh, the first people who received it were kind of higher in the descent hierarchy, you know, the important descent, you know, the, the philosopher, the professor. Um, and uh, Vatsal Benda said uh, his idea was no, screw it. Uh, if we have uh, uh, such a document, such a such a uh, uh, like newsletter or something like that, we will first give it to the person that can make the most copies. That's that's the key, you know. Uh, we we're not going by, by the ranks. Um, so it optimized the spread of these informations and it kind of. Uh, 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 kind of put fuel into this uh, information network so this maybe is not as important in current society but that was their innovation there was no xerox or um, uh, you couldn't make a photocopy people were typing it on type typewriters and, and so on um, uh, then there was education i already talked about that uh, culture uh, uh, especially uh, czech republic especially prague had a very vibrant uh, parallel culture uh, decent culture illegal concerts uh, 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 illegal censored books uh, poetry even uh, theater uh, so 
this is what this was not innovation of Václav Benda. It was already happening. Uh, he just said, "Okay, let's embrace this. This is good. We need uh, we need parallel culture because uh, um, if you see the the official culture, it's horrible. It's like I don't know why radio still play that to this day, but uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's uh, it hurts to hear. It's like totally without content. It is uh, uh, like I, I don't know. I don't <laughs> I don't even know how to describe the muzak and the." Uh, and uh, and the stuff of uh, you know movies about uh, workers working in a factory and uh, horrible uh, and the last part uh, which was very difficult uh, maybe I missed some but uh, I tried try to uh, remember the important ones uh, mm -hmm. but the one that was uh, uh, very difficult for Václav Benda to accept was uh, parallel economy or uh, black markets. Um, uh, he was not comfortable about, uh, with it uh, somehow for some reason uh, and uh, but on the other hand uh, he realized that it that it's important so right now we you know we uh, think about guys in hoodies and you know trading whatever wheat <laughs> psychedelics or something back then it was much easier so uh, so when you were a descent uh, let's say you were an university professor uh, the the cops uh, uh, realized that uh, okay these guys uh, uh, probably you know um, uh, dangerous for the system so uh, let's downgrade him to a worker so he would go and he would uh, uh, go to a whatever uh, 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 fabrics factory making fabrics or whatever he would become a miner or something like that um, so uh, and it would also attack uh, the, the system would also attack them economically they would not pay them enough and so on so the parallel economy back then uh, we were actually talking to some people from uh, from that era they would say okay the uh, parallel economy meant that uh, um, that we uh, like we know that this guy suffers he's a he's a descent he's, he's part of this and he's a um, uh, uh, he's someone who is suffering because of uh, what he was doing for us so we'll bring him some apples and some fruits from our garden and so on so this was the black market that he had in mind mm -hmm. um, so so basically uh, uh, so this is kind of the the history um, it was interesting. It's very hard to uh, to see how much it took off. Uh, the culture uh, we know of of, uh, of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, culture from back then um, that uh, that was uh, ki kind of matching this uh, this description, but it was already there before. Um, but maybe maybe it helped to kind of uh, uh, lay the lay the bricks for them, uh, the philosophical bricks, and uh, understand how to operate better, how not to be discovered, and so on. Um, uh, but uh, for as for other uh, parts, uh, we don't know how much of an effect it had really. Uh, I have heard that it took off a little bit more in Poland, where it was more popular. Um, but uh, but it, it's very hard to quantify. So, uh, but why why we uh, got inspired by it? Because uh, that it's a strategy where they say, okay, I don't want to be in jail. Uh, probably <laughs> neither do you. That's why I like the vonu uh, term, uh, mean time to harassment. Mm -hmm. This is what we optimize for, and we don't want to. I, I really like this uh, 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 this way of looking at. Uh, uh, something that i call freedom from um so uh so of course we don't want to you know uh s stand on the street with an un unregistered gun and say oh fuck you i'm not paying taxes and you know i don't respect your authority <laughs> because that wouldn't help like you probably wouldn't <laughs> live a more uh, uh, free life uh, if you, if you did this um so so the strategy is kind of uh, kind of nice um and uh it uh, uh and and uh, what they did is that uh, they made sure of course that there are no snitches in the in the parallel uh, society so you had to had have some kind of um um, entry verification they knew you know who is in and who is out you would not just invite uh, anyone randomly 
so that's the same with parallel uh, parallel police um, in uh, uh, wherever it operates. And I think now there are at least three open places: uh, uh, one in Slovakia, in Košice, and one in Vienna, in Austria. I think uh, maybe the the are doing something with a place in Barcelona but all of them you know everyone knows if they are part of the of the organization it doesn't have to be formal it doesn't have to be, have whatever government registration that doesn't matter mm -hmm. but you need to know okay this guy is a member of the community and this next guy is just someone who uh, who ordered coffee in the Bitcoin coffee and uh, like they can uh, become if they if they go through the through the entry process. Um, uh, uh, so the first part is kind of uh, um, uh, the the uh, kind of entry filter. Um, then what you want to do, um, uh, at least how my my perception of this strategy is uh, for the people that are in, you try to. Uh, increase uh, the value of uh, being part of this community as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So that means lowering transaction costs, you know, you're aligned um, on, uh, uh, you're aligned on uh, uh, values. So, you know, you don't have to endlessly discuss who would build the roads or, you know, you're not talking about who, who, who is, and these things. So, so it kind of, uh, uh, this filter basically creates uh, um, uh, a way for people to interact in a better way and better uh, of course means uh, different things for different people uh, but for me for example it was a way to um, to find people uh, to do business with of course friends uh, uh, and uh, and when you are aligned if you like uh, if uh, it's a society that says, okay, if we agree on something, we consider it a contract and we, uh, we you know, follow through, <laughs> um, then it's m much different than, uh, than someone uh, who, would, uh, uh, who would, I don't know, uh, rely on the fact that they can uh, bribe a judge in enforcing the contract and not really mm -hmm. enforce it and so on. So, so it reduces transaction costs and kind of creates uh, the value for this society. So it's more, um, uh, everyone finds it useful to be a member of, of it. So uh, for this reason, there is an entry cost, uh, which is mostly in time and so energy invested, um, but there is no by these values, uh, they would get kicked out um and they would lose all all this uh, value that that uh, that uh, being part of the community um is uh, uh, is uh, uh, the, the being part of this community brings to uh, to the individual so uh, this makes it possible to uh, kind of enforce or or have some kind of justice uh because uh, um if two people are in conflict, they need to solve it somehow with the help of the community or by themselves, but it needs to happen. You know, they will not be going to the same house if they are in conflict. And eventually, if it's not possible to solve it, uh, the the party that the community realizes that they cheated or they did, uh, did something not according to the values, they will be kicked out. So uh, this is like the, Theoretical anarchists, I call them theoretical anarchists because they are, you know, uh, talking about what ifs. Um, mm -hmm. uh, one of the discussions that, uh, that the, the theoretical anarchists uh, uh, have with the statists is uh, what, uh, uh, like, who would enforce justice and who would enforce rules and how do you enforce uh, some kind of court decisions or something like that. Um, so this is a strategy of parallel society. You uh, you make sure that the value that being a member is so high that no one wants to get kicked out and thus they will abide by, uh, first of all, values. Uh, but if they do not do that, uh, then then they will have to um, think about what that means, means for them when, when the community decides what, what happened. So... 
so this is uh, this is kind of how it works internally. So there's uh, kind of this inner group of people. Then you, of course, are friendly to others. You, there's no need to, you know, kick people out of the place or something like that. Uh, but uh, um, uh, but you make sure that you bring uh, enough value, especially for the for the inside uh, uh, community. And uh, then, of course. Uh, uh, Paralne Paralnipolis uh, is a non-profit organization, but uh, I say that uh, even non-profit organizations, they need to create uh, a profit of some way. Uh, and what I mean by that uh, is, of course, uh, green numbers uh, are good. Uh, if, if you actually uh, uh, make more than, than you spend, then, then, then it's good. But it also means... Uh, um, uh, I also mean uh, in terms of uh, uh, energy that people invest and get out of it. You know, if you are going to a non-profit and you, you know, spend uh, half of your time there and uh, and it's not bringing you enough uh, uh, back, it doesn't have to be monetary. It can be, you know, you're learning something or you enjoying it uh, uh, really a lot, uh, but you cannot uh, sustain um, uh, um, an organization uh, that is uh, losing both money and kind of burning energy of the people. So what I say is, okay, it's okay that we are uh, we are a nonprofit, uh, but we need to bring value to uh, the, the society. It doesn't have to be general society. We can be very specific about who we are for, mm -hmm. uh, but we need to provide some kind of service uh, to to people that reflects uh, in. Uh, in if people believe in the project, if they want to invest in it. So it can even be uh, sponsors, it's okay. Uh, but many, many nonprofit organizations say, okay, uh, we cannot find a sponsor. So, you know, we are poor NGO and no one understands us and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, you know, the sponsors, they want also to see, you know, uh, if I give you a thousand dollars, I don't want to give it to you because you know <laughs> uh, you're a nice person. Uh, I want you to use that money to to bring something to to the society or to me or uh, or however. But I want want to see uh, that this uh, makes sense. That this actually creates something useful in the uh, in the world. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, so basically, uh, I say it's a non-profit, but also it is a business uh, in in this sense, um, and we we need to find ways to to create value. And there have been many iterations of what to do: uh, conferences, coffee, co-working, uh, uh, startup incubator, hackerspace. Uh, uh, we had a, we had a VR uh, playground uh, in Bratislava. We had a space in Bratislava. Unfortunately, we closed it down uh, uh, a little bit, like what, two weeks before the pandemic, when we see what is coming. Mm. <laughs> um, and uh, um, there are um, so so actually, it is still part of market discovery. What we actually do, what is the the real value that we bring, and I don't have an answer for that. Uh, but it needs to be something, and we need to be looking for it. Uh, otherwise, it will just, you know, burn the energy of volunteers, and everyone will be burned out, and they will just leave, and it will not be able to survive long term. So, ten years mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, is, uh, um, I would say, like not not many projects actually survived 10 years. I should clarify that I do not live in Prague, so it's not my, um, uh, it's not because I did something well, like the organization is running by itself, by, by the by the community. Uh, so so they, they are doing something right, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I, I wanted to, there was uh, one chapter, or I guess one one sentence from your book, um, and this this really um, highlights why like why I think uh, Parallel Polis is just it's 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 fantastic and, and and how it overlaps so much with the second realm, um, you know, philosophy and practice. Um, but uh, you said you said quote, and it was uh, Václav Benda, one of many who realized that a possible reaction to totalitarianism was to create a free society quietly, so that totalitarianism would not, would not see it and could not prosecute its members. Uh, in these parallel societies, people uh, regain pieces of lost freedom, and that's also you know permanent autonomous zones too, which second realm is is also foundation upon. So um, that's uh, that's yeah, an, an incredible 
Um, and uh, it, it, it does kind of, um, uh, and I guess just to speak to Second Realm again, it does bring bring to mind, um, you know, like uh, what they were doing then and what's, uh, I guess, also what you kind of described with Parallel Polis. We're not trying to overthrow, you know, your society. You can have your society. We're just, you know, doing our own thing. Um, same thing with the second, you know, a smuggler and yeah. XYZ say that too. It's like, well, you know, when you're in their society, you have the respect for their society that you'd want them to have for years. Um, you know, within reason, obviously, right? Um, and, uh, and, and, yeah. and I think that's, I think that's wise advice because if you aren't starting trouble, then you can kind of, you know, probably fly under the radar a lot more, you know, a lot more likely. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's all, all, yeah, all, all great so far. And I guess the question that comes to mind, I know, Pat, I know, you know, a lot of Finuans will have this question too. Um, you know, with how, with, you know, how, um, focus rail was on mobility, um, you know, even, you know, even just a stationary, you know, um, stationary dwellings were not, you know, you know, advisable, advisable to him, say, making vulnerable to coercers. So I guess, how, how do you, or I guess, how does like the Institute of Crypto Anarchy, Parallel Polis and Prague, um, and some of these, how do these, how do these relationships, you know, exist, I guess, per se? Um, could you, could you speak to that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, um, we wanted to create uh, uh, um, like a permanent physical space, uh, uh, maybe maybe because uh, most people lived in Prague and they they wanted to have it. Um, and uh, I think uh, what is interesting is that um, uh, the, the relationship it has created with the mainstream society. So uh, the first thing that the group did is uh, uh, is uh, paint the building black. Uh, so it's a it's a completely uh, black building, uh, which was um, uh, without the approval of the uh, of the city. Uh, so it was kind of, it kind of set the tone of the of the interaction. And the, and basically uh, because it is the project of this art group, um, uh, we try to discover the boundaries. So. You don't, you know, you you don't do something crazy like, you know, beat someone up or something like that. You just push the boundary a little bit. You know, what if we did not accept legal tender? You know, <laughs> so it's not something you will never go to jail for that. You might get a fine or something, but but you test. Okay, so how long can we sustain this? Um, so uh, in a in a way, uh, the group behind it uh, kind of set the tone, and uh, uh, the uh, so if actually um, uh, the the uh, the mainstream society and, uh, and 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 the state would kind of uh, attack uh, the project and kind of make it disappear, uh, I personally perceive this as a success of the project because that shows. Uh, how intolerant the mainstream society is uh, to these parallel uh, parallel solutions. What is interesting is that this did not happen, <laughs> um, and there there were many like to me it is crazy because I thought that uh, it will it will not survive a few months. Like if we if if we set this tone in this way, um, uh, so so basically uh, the strategy that is described in Second Realm and Vonu. Um, both kind of optimize uh, to um, avoid conflict, you know, mean time to harassment in Vonu and uh, and basically the, the UDA loop. Uh, I don't know if uh, Smuggler talked about UDA loops when he was a guest on your podcast. We actually talk a lot like uh, he's, um, uh, he uh, attends all the Hackers Congress and so on. So we are very familiar with the, with the second row st strategy and, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, these uh, like um, uh, Vonuans and uh, and uh, uh, and second realm optimizes for uh, for actually avoiding conflict um, because Parani police uh, at least originally in Prague I don't know about the other other places how they perceive it uh, right now but uh, it was started by an art group and conflict and actually kind of pushing the boundary uh, like with the nuclear blast in the TV and so on. Um, uh, it, it is uh, basically defining the art form and uh, and you don't want to shy away from the conflict. And even if you don't win it, you learn something about, uh, about society. So for me, uh, surprisingly, I learned that uh, Czech society is very tolerant uh, and uh, um, I can tell about some some of the crazy things that happened, and uh, you would not uh, not believe that you could do that. Uh, I believe if we did this uh, in the U.S., uh, uh, someone would be shot at least. Uh, 
and definitely many people would be in jail. So, so for one of the before one of the congress, uh, what we did is, uh, or, or the group uh, did, uh, was that um, uh, there is the the Prague Castle, which is the seat of the president, and they have this flag, you know, um, uh, it's called the standard, which uh, which goes up when uh, when uh, uh, the president is uh, uh, in the castle physically. Um, and it's the symbol of, of course, you know, the chief is in the, <laughs> in the, um, uh, in the, in the castle. Um, I have to say, I'm not Czech, so I really like, uh, well, I don't care about the Slovak president either, but I totally don't care about the Czech president. It's like, you know, a, a manager of the grocery store for me. I, I don't have any relationship mm -hmm. to, uh, to this person. So, but it was like, uh, still is actually they're just voting a new chief but it's a it's a you know drunk guy very stupid very kind of uh, um a harsh very uh well basically he's an alcoholic uh, that doesn't matter uh he's uh, uh, uh in a in a european in most european countries uh president is more a ceremonial function they don't actually do the decision it's not it's not a uh, head of the government, you know, it's the guy that, you know, shakes the hand of the <laughs> other guy, of the chief of uh, other state, whatever. So basically uh, what the group did was, uh, okay, there was this flag and the flag symbolizes the centralized power uh, in a ceremonial way, uh, but, but it symbolizes, okay, this, this is where the power of the state comes from. So what do you do with the with the flag? Of course, uh, you want to steal it. Uh, if you played any computer game uh, that was uh, capture the flag, then you say, okay, you need to uh, th like it's something that you that you need to do. So uh, imagine you did this uh, at the White House. You probably everyone would be shot on sight, yeah, <laughs> but not yeah. not in Czech Republic. So that's that's what I'm saying. I'm very you know positively. Uh, uh, Sur surprised that uh, that uh, how tolerant the Czech society is. So anyway, so uh, so uh, we we're thinking, okay, so so you take down the flag. So what what do you do? Uh, um, so we decided uh, because uh, the the president is basically an old communist or socialist. Um, uh, uh, we decided to uh, to replace it with uh, red underwear. Uh, which is like red boxer shorts or something uh -huh. like that, a huge one, because it was a fl it was replacing a flag, and this is a symbol uh, of uh, normalization of everyone being the same. Uh, because when you uh, when you uh, had a, a gym class at school, uh, all the boys had to wear the standardized red underwear and the white um, t-shirt or some uh, or. Um, uh, or, or or kind of top um, so so everyone uh, every child uh, every boy was looking the same and uh, for us this was a great symbol because you know uh, the centralized power wants everyone to be the same and uh, and the, especially this president is representing it of course he was there was a lot of um, uh, a political background that is not that uh, interesting uh, definitely not for the listeners it's not so much interesting for me as i said i don't mm -hmm. have any relationship to to this person so this happened uh, uh we uh basically the the uh, the flag was replaced by the by this red underwear uh, uh and that that's why i'm saying you know uh, not shy of conflict you know they were arrested there was a court um, uh, and in the in the group philosophy the court means okay we can communicate with the public you know it is uh, all the media w uh, are there and then you can explain what you are doing why you are doing it why why don't you um why don't you respect the president what do you think about it and so on and the goal is not to do something uh, that everyone agrees on uh, with the goal is to be like 50 50 you want to create this discussion you want to create uh, you know, chatter in the pubs, and everyone should uh, should discuss something that was not discussed before at all. So the goal is actually half people should hate it and half people should love it, and they should uh, they should kind of 
continue this project by, by discussion. So then another part was uh, that uh, the outer part uh, with the with the pictures <laughs> of the of the flag that uh, that uh, we got uh, we had it and we didn't know what to do with it. You know, you have some guys flag from from the castle and they're embarrassed about it. And so so what do you do do with it? So someone says of. of Okay, so if this is a, a power, uh, if this is a symbol of a centralized power, you take take scissors, you decentralize it, and you give it to to the people. Hmm. Um, uh, so so uh, the backstory is that the court wanted uh, to pay damages, which is of course caused the damage. Uh, uh, of course, the group should pay for the damage, no, no problem. But we are not paying uh, to the state because uh, the state didn't pay for it. The, uh, the people paid for it. So so uh, we created, I believe this is the first NFT uh, uh, ever uh, on, on Bitcoin. Basically, uh, the flag was cut into more than 1,000 pieces. Um, and we put a, a paper uh, with each piece uh, there. Uh, and there was a QR code uh, uh, with a private and public key. The private key was hidden by another piece uh, or, uh, under another piece of paper. And we were uh, giving this on in all the major cities in Czech, Repu Czech Republic to everyone. Uh, because of, of course we want to pay back the damage, but in our money <laughs> uh, that that we believe in, because you know the Czech shitcoin <laughs> doesn't mean anything to us, so <laughs> that that would be dishonest. And uh, and uh, give it back to the people who, who got it, and they got a piece of art with a with a QR code. It, it was uh, verifiable that it became from the series, and it was from the from the president's flag. So it, symbolically, you would uh, return it to the. Uh, uh, you would uh, uh, give it back to the people. So another funny funny thing that relates to this is that a few days ago there are new elections coming, and uh, uh, a few day, days ago um, one of the presidential candidates uh, came to Parallelny Police uh, to ask if we could return at least the central part that we did not <laughs> that we did not uh, cut you know the the part of the fabric or or something like that so they're interacting with us but basically the the idea or what i how i perceive it as a as an outsider as i say i'm I, i'm not czech uh, but as an outsider what i see is that um, they don't really want this conflict you know we want it more than they do uh, because they realized that um, uh, that uh, if they kind of uh, uh, come into conflict with us, uh, it usually doesn't end well for them uh, because they have to explain it in the media. People like the project. Uh, so, you know, why are you attacking a small nonprofit of people who educate people about cryptocurrencies? Why mm -hmm. are you doing this or that? So, so, uh, so. But this parallel society, that's the reason that it's uh, physical permanent is because we don't want to avoid conflict. Personally, I, uh, as a person, uh, I'm trying to decentralize uh, geographically. Um, I spend a lot of time in Paraguay. Um, I'm also a van nomad, uh, so, so I, I have a van and I, mm. I like this kind of lifestyle. Uh, many people actually from Parallelpolis do that. Uh, there is a side project to Parallelpolis that is called Decent Track, which is a, a truck version. It's a huge truck and it's a truck version of Parallelpolis. So if you, wow. uh, if, if there's a music festival or something like that, the Decent Track arrives and it's kind of um, inside out. So basically everything uh, that you need to create Parallelpolis is inside. Then you put the tables out and, and everything. And there's a a small Bitcoin ATM because, of course, you cannot pay with fiat <laughs> even in in the decentralized version. Uh, uh, there is a, a super hipster professional third wave coffee machine. Uh, there is a uh, there is a projector uh, for the the beamer for the for the presentations and so on. And, and you can kind of bring this kind of experience to uh, to the people if they if they want it. So. Um, Usually, uh, it was uh, going to kind of freedom-minded uh, or music festivals. Um, but the idea is, if you want, um, uh, for example, to uh, have a, a, a start a small community in your city, 
uh, the the truck uh, can come to your city, park somewhere, uh, and uh, and uh, the local community can kind of gather around it. Uh, we could provide some talks. Uh, they could provide some talks. They could be. Uh, of course, we are very good at introducing people to cryptocurrencies because everyone has to use crypto. Uh, so, so this is kind of the the mobile version. I also like the 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 smugglers second realm uh, version um, uh, of uh, with shipping containers. There, yeah. there are many ways to do it. So, so it it was a. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a conscious decision uh, to have a permanent space. I, I don't think that we actually were thinking about it that much. We didn't know about Vonu uh, and uh, and all these other things. Uh, but it, it is what it is. And uh, basically, the idea is that, that the place is not shy of conflict. It doesn't. It's okay. Like if they want to, you know, we were we were uh, saying that uh, you know, what one of the conflict was. Um, uh, uh, that uh, at HCPP there was an auction uh, of coins, uh, which were uh, silver uh, coins with uh, like crypto anarchist figures like Julian Assange. There was, uh, I think, Snowden one, uh, Aaron Schwartz, and all these, you know, crypto anarchistic heroes. Uh, it was all, it also uh, was. Um, uh, backed by Bitcoin, it was like part of the private key was on the coin, and so it was a beautiful artistically made coin, and there was an auction and so on. And one day the Czech National Bank said, uh, "Oh, you need to pay a fine because only we or who uh, who uh, we say that can uh, mint coins can mint coins, and we didn't allow you to mint coins, so you can mint it, but it's not a coin." Uh, and <laughs> we were like, okay, so I take a random person, I show it to them and ask them what it is. And they say, it's a coin. So what do you mean? We cannot use the word coin. Like, what are we crazy? You know, it's like, uh, this is a computer mouse, but I should call it, uh, whatever, a monkey or <laughs> like, what do you mean that we cannot use a, use a Czech word? Um, and the attitude is, uh, of course, th then th there was like, okay, so we should fight it. And uh, and uh, people in Paraboli said, no, like we don't we don't care. You know, if they if they come uh, uh, and they want to enforce the fine, okay, let them take the coffee machine. Or however, like, <laughs> what are they going to do? You know, are they going to beat someone up and you know steal your money? Probably, but. Uh, uh, then they would definitely not want to read the newspaper the next day. <laughs> so, yeah. So this this is the kind of relationship that they have. Awesome. Yeah. That's uh. That's really. Um. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. That's uh. It's all really, really, yeah, really incredible stuff. Yeah. I was not aware with uh, not aware of uh really any of that. Um. But yeah. That's uh. That's that's amazing. So I guess just uh. Um. Kind of start wrapping. I get, get towards wrapping up here. It's been going been going for about an hour and I have to get you back on because there's a lot of stuff that we did we didn't get to. But um. Something that's been really at the front of my mind. You know. Yeah, since sure. since since you've been talking, um. <clears throat> is pretty much that like uh um because you're talking about openness um like the, the the you know capturing the flag there um you know went pretty well considering um whereas you know in uh you know here in the ussa that would be a very bad thing um it, it would not go well so like you're even like the mm -hmm. openness um because uh, rayo talked about um it was like the last one of the last uh well, anyway, um, he talked about, you know, like what was, what was Vanu 50 years ago may not be Vanu today and what was Vanu today may not be Vanu, you know, um, you know, 100 years from now. Um, well, it's kind of the same, you know, like in the same, in, in, you mm -hmm. know, in the same time frame too. Like, uh, you know, what's Vanu in, in the States might not be Vanu and, you know, the Czech Republic and what's Vanu and, you know, the Netherlands might not be Vanu in Mexico or whatever, if you, you know what I'm saying. So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I think any, yeah. any viable freedom strategy has to be dynamic in that way, um, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's all, uh, all fascinating. All right, so um, I guess uh, yeah, I guess one one final question here before we uh, before we um, you know close out. Um, since I did mention at the beginning that I was getting kind of getting into Lightning, um, I know one of the issues with Lightning a lot of people talk about is privacy. So with privacy on Lightning, what are you know some concerns, current future solutions, uh, et cetera? Real quick as we as we close out here. Sure. Uh, Lightning uh, has pretty good privacy. Uh, what is nice about it uh, that uh, contrary to other cryptocurrency payment networks, uh, it doesn't create permanent records of transactions. Uh, 
So, uh, so even with things like Monero, uh, the transaction is mined and it's saved into blockchain. Uh, with uh, uh, with Lightning, actually, only uh, the channels are uh, are saved on on chain, uh, but they can process many transactions. So this is one of the things. Uh, even if the you know cryptography in the future um, uh, is broken or something like that, uh, uh, that the only thing that you can attack is the present moment. So basically, um, in cryptography, uh, this relates to uh, the sense of uh, perfect forward secrecy. So uh, I, in the beginning, I gave, um, uh, um, uh, uh, I, I, I was saying about PGP for encrypted email. So PGP doesn't have this property. So, uh, so if your key leaks, uh, the person that uh, saved all the encrypted uh, emails or documents that you encrypted with pgp can decrypt decrypt everything uh, from the history that they, they saved mm -hmm. uh, other technologies such as signal for example or even some uh, in some configurations https for encrypted websites have this property of perfect forward secrecy which means unless uh, you unless uh, you already have the leaked key um, you cannot decipher past uh, ciphertext. So basically, this is how I look at uh, Lightning versus everything else is, yes, they might be attacks on Lightning, but unless the attacker is active and is there right now, uh, they are not going to be able to uh, get to the past transactions because they already happened and there's no record of them. There is, uh, they, ju they just happened. So it's like a really peer-to-peer -peer, uh, transaction system in uh, in this sense so uh uh so yeah i, I think i think that uh, of course there are you know you can improve uh, the recipient privacy uh you can uh, so basically uh the two transactions uh, uh sent to the same person uh like uh, cannot be uh, uh cannot be paired as uh, going to the same person. There's a project called Ellen Proxy that does this. Um, but overall, like if I had to choose uh, how I want to transact uh, privately without any like super complicated setup, I would personally either go with Lightning or with Monero. So I'm a fan of both. I don't, uh, um, uh, I'm not, uh, not like a, Bitcoin maximalist. I'm not uh, also uh, a hater of of Bitcoin. I think both are uh, great projects. Uh, so so either of them is good enough for most uh, use cases. I think. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm I'm starting to come around come around to that too. I mean, last year I was definitely a lot more you know BTC only, but um, it's uh, you know the technology is always solid. But I haven't been happy with the the status trends I've been seeing on Twitter. You know, it's like just get it however you can KYC or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, it's like actually it kind of does matter you know like it, yeah, it makes yeah. it it's, it definitely matters um so to kind of see that you know status backsliding is unfortunate yeah. so i kind of just as uh, you know bitcoin you know samurai wallet and sparrow and things like that whirlpool like it, it is definitely viable you know privately now um in lightning as, as we were talking about but um, i don't know if it's going to be in five years or so you know like a, you know who knows what that political climate is going to be like and monero is yeah. a, a good yeah. solid you know secondary there's definitely a use case for it i mean privacy is important and I don't like I, I don't know of any of the privacy coins and any of the other ones worth their yes. salt. So it's pretty much Monero at this point is kind of where I'm at. But uh, yeah, yeah, mostly. And it, it has great community. I was at some uh, Monero conferences and uh, and it has a very similar vibe to the first Bitcoin conference. conference. So it's not like no token shilling, no, you know, traders. Mm -hmm. so, no, it's like really privacy minded people in hoodies and <laughs> uh, you know talking talking about uh, stuff that matters uh, uh, markets and and um, and relationships and so on so I, I really like the community yeah well that's really that's uh, it's definitely really good to hear um, so I guess yeah we'll, we'll, we'll close out there I'm hoping at some point you know it's my one of my goals for a few years has been to make it out to hackers Congress so hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll see you out there sometime um, I did I was at last the, last the year before I think it was a couple of years ago um, there was the I guess the 24 hour stream um, at hackers Congress and I got to uh, to partake in that with smuggler and a couple other folks mm -hmm. which is which is cool but I'd like to get there in person and actually you know experience it because uh, I know you know the second realm culture is uh, something that has to be experienced in physical space and time so um, I guess uh, yeah with that I appreciate all the all the work you've all the work and effort you've done you know put put in the past you know decade or so um, and uh, 
um, yeah, it's been it's been great talking, and, and uh, we'll have to get you back on to, to cover a lot more things. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll mention again that uh, we do have your book listed, uh, cryptocurrency, uh, cryptocurrency, you. hack your way to a better life uh, over at Libertarian Type Publications. So um, people should definitely pick that up. Uh, um, we really just talked about the parallel, soci- parallel societies part now, which a lot yeah. of that's in that chapter. Um, we're in that just in that one chapter in that book. Um, but yeah, there's uh, there's so much more value. So yeah. we'll, we'll have to get you back on. So. Yes, thank All you. Right. All right. Uh, anything, <laughs> Thanks for any, having me. Yep. Uh, would you like to uh, plug anything before I let you go? Any uh, websites or uh, um, anything? Yeah, I. Uh, you can uh, you can definitely, uh, and I would like you to check uh, check my book. I want to basically say um, uh, the idea uh, behind the book, and uh, also it relates to Parallel Police, uh, is that you have a. Um, um, the the one ones call it political crusading but it's it can be like even even the you know anarcho capitalists and all these philosophies objectivists uh, minarchies and so on uh, they spend a lot of time uh, of uh, with uh, you know sitting in pubs and discussing who would build the roads and who would do that and and that and how how would the, this free society look like and for me, this is not enough. I don't have time to wait for some utopian society. I want to live my life now. So I like strategies uh, that uh, uh, that bring me more liberty today uh, and I can work towards them. Um, Vono is a great strategy. That's why I was excited to learn about it from you, uh, uh, even though <laughs> we haven't met, uh, but I've, I've heard all your, all your podcasts. And it's also the idea behind the book. So there are many, many books uh, which talk about cryptocurrencies, you know, and they say, oh, this is a wallet, uh, this is a QR code, this is how you send a transaction, and this is why it will go to the moon or things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, me personally, um, uh, for me, I, I haven't seen anything that explained, okay, so how you can actually use this thing uh, to improve your life. Okay, one one idea would be, you know, number go up technology and you, you know, buy, hodl and pray <laughs> and hope your, your uh, wealth will multiply. Uh, but that's not all there is to it. And I think you can do things with uh, with uh, embracing uh, volatility. We all know that uh, Bitcoin and uh, all, uh, cryptocurrencies in general are volatile. And uh, you can either fight it or you can accept it and um, uh, and make use of it. So there's, there's a lot about uh, living in a volatile environment. This comes back to Parallel Police. Um, it really runs on cryptocurrencies. We don't uh, change to fiat as soon as we receive it, as many merchants do. We really are doing, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, accounting really based on uh, based on crypto. So uh, when it moons, we can invest. When it's down, we are kind of struggling. And then we have built some strategies on how to, you know, survive the bear, bear markets and so on. So. Um, but it's all it's not theory it is in relation of uh, uh of uh, uh, first of all a life of a business or non-profit as i was saying and then uh, as uh, in relation to personal life how does this thing bring me more liberty today what i can do to uh, to improve my liberty and uh, i i believe that this is uh, this is what resonates with uh, vonu a lot because vonu is not a philosophy uh, uh aimed at you know winning uh, uh, a fight on twitter or you know uh explaining to a fellow socialists why why they are wrong uh, <laughs> it is a strategy uh, uh to to live a more free life and if liberty is your your value uh, then there are strategies to do that so i tried uh, with this book um, my main goal was uh, to that's why the subtitle is Hack Your Way to a Better Life. How do I use this thing to to live um, a, a better, in my opinion, uh, according to my values life? So uh, I think it's unique. So uh, so if you have time, if you if you are interested in uh, in this and you would like to give it a try, it's not for everyone, of course. Then then I think it's a good resource to start uh, uh, and see what your options are. So. That's my plug. <laughs> awesome. 
Yeah, yeah, and I definitely do recommend people uh, people pick it up, not just because we have it here at Elliot Publications now, but um, like I said um, a couple times already, that Parallel Societies chapter is just chock full of value, and uh, it's a long book. Um, it's not just uh, it's not just you know a short little um, short book. It's it's long. It's thorough. Um, very actionable. So I would uh, certainly recommend folks check that out. Uh, LibertyInterTech.com forward slash hack your way. Uh, you're right. It was uh, fantastic to talk, and we'll uh, we'll have to uh, you know like I said, get you back on in the future. So thanks again. Thanks again. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Bye bye. Yep. Um, all right, guys. Uh, so there you have it. Um, you're I. Uh, uh, you're I. Bednar. But uh, so yeah, I guess uh, again, libertyintact.com forward slash hack your way to uh, pick up a copy of his book, and um, you can check out the audiobook sample of that that chapter in its entirety, which was released today on the podcast feed and uh, on Odyssey. And um, lastly, a uh, reminder: you can now find the Vani podcast on Lightning apps like Fountain, uh, where you can stream Sats. Um, so, uh, yeah, if like, check us, if you'd like to check out fountain, I would recommend visiting vonniepodcast.com forward slash fountain. Uh, that is a short link for an affiliate link. Uh, so yeah, get on board through there and uh, fountain will toss us some, just toss some sats in our direction. So, uh, thanks so much for tuning in guys. Uh, vonniepodcast.com for all things, vonniepaznia.com, uh, for all things, if you're public and, uh, libertarianattack.com for, uh, books, privacy tools, uh, apothecary items and, uh, much more. So, uh, thanks until next time. Rayo was right. Freedom does indeed need more full-time professionals, not collective movement preachers seeking a coterie of followers, but explorers, inventors, developers of liberated life ways. Undoubtedly, numerous folks are truly seeking a way out of the servile society, but they don't see any options outside of political crusading or apathy. Many are being emotionally and physically broken down by the 9 to 5 grind, the daily pressures of the servile society, and the recognition of how truly unfree they really are. That being the case, our task as Venuans now becomes self-liberation and marketing in that order. Reason being, if we are ever going to see an alternative economy, a sovereign free port, a new libertarian country, or whatever other grandiose strategy comes into fruition, we need to first break people free from the servile society and into a lifestyle change of their choosing. Additionally, if we are ever going to see the abolition of the state, we must do our damnedest to eliminate the market demand for it. A great way to do that is by showing individuals that there are other options, and to help them in the process as much as possible. Some entrepreneurs may even be able to monetize such a venture in the form of consulting, or the development of tools or services to ease the transition from the first realm to the second realm. Rayo's first book, Vaughn of the Search for Personal Freedom, was initially published in 1983. 35 plus years later, many of these strategies are just as practical now as they were then, if not more so thanks to the evolution of technology. Yet, some recommendations he and others posited are extremely outdated, destined to fail in the modern day. Vanu is based upon reality, not legality, and therefore, it will develop according to the external factors of the present time. Freedom is not free. It takes time, effort, money, an extreme amount of dedication, and a willingness to make sacrifices. It requires the willingness and ability to create, develop, and to problem solve, as we are the self-liberators of the 21st century, pioneering the path forward to a freer future. It is not for everybody, and neither is Vani. There's no better way to end this book than with these wise, timeless words from our friend and posthumous mentor, Rayo. Quote, a Venuan to me is not just someone living in a particular manner. Lifestyles may change. A lifestyle which was Vanu 100 years ago may not be Vanu today. Some lifestyles Vanu today were not possible 100 years ago and may not be Vanu 50 years from now. A Vanuan is someone who places a high value on relative invulnerability to coercion. Someone for whom freedom is worth a fair amount, though not infinite, of effort, inconvenience, discomfort. To a Vanuan, Vanu is not just a means to other ends, nor is it an ultimate end. Like most qualities of life and life itself, it is both. A Vanuan will choose whatever way of living offers personal sovereignty, and will change lifestyle again and again if necessary." End quote. Your free future is closer than you think. This was an excerpt from my book, Vanu, A Strategy for Self-Liberation, available in the Self-Liberation Bundle. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash SL Bundle to snag every book we offer at a huge discount. Currently 18 books. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash SL Bundle is where to go to pick that up. And to view our full catalog, please visit libertyunderattack.com. LUA Publications.
share your story, find your freedom.